Hi everyone, how are you? This is going to be a really good experience for you guys if you want to do a touch up on your boat by giving it a bit of a paint. I'm just doing the top top sections of my boat um, and the front section of the boat. It's pretty good nick, the rest of it. It's original nick to, uh, what is it, no, um, 1991 model boat, but the actual paint work on this old Savage boat is really good on the sides, so good enough anyway. I'll just give it a bit of a polish up at the end, which you will see at the end of the video. Um, first thing to do is really give it a sand. Here I've uh, sanded it already and I've given it a blow down. Sandpaper, whatever you wish, doesn't really matter because the primer will cover any scratches that appear and you can do it with a uh, random orbital sander or by hand. The primer is pretty well self-filling. Um, it's a water-based acrylic primer. Um, they actually call it a what is it, an acrylic latex water-based primer. Um, very flexible, made to go over bare steel, aluminium, all sorts of metals, woods, plastics. Um, as you can see, the plastic uh, rod holders, there's three on either side, they're staying. I'll just paint those, that's fine. It'll pretty well go over anything. If you'd accidentally drop the stuff, it, you can't get it off. It's scratch, 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 trying to get it off. Very difficult. Um, being water-based, very easy to clean up. So I've sanded it down, I'll give it a blow. If you haven't got in a compressor where you can blow it off, just use a uh, vacuum cleaner. That's the best thing. You need to get the dust out of all the cracks and that. So either suck it out or blow it out uh, as I did. Um, depends on your allergies. Obviously you're blowing it all over yourself, it's not great. Here is a bottle of mineral turpentine. You've got all these fancy gum removers, etc. Turpentine won't damage anything and it will remove all the garbage. Any where the stickers have been that you want to get off, you might have to wet it for a while and then get it off, but brilliant. It's just amazing stuff. This primer, you don't even need to sand it. You don't have to. It says it quite clearly on the, on the tin. The fact that I want it to uh, last forever and a day, I, I give it a light sand, but it doesn't mention you need to at all. As I said, it goes over glass it goes over tiles glazed tiles so pretty amazing stuff um here i am priming i mean i'm masking it up that's pretty self-explanatory use a good quality masking tape now you can do this whole job the primer sets in half an hour and that's all you need to do if you're using an acrylic latex paint over the top which i am um, if you're putting an enamel over the top which is fine it's totally suitable for that one hour drying time um, as long as the conditions are pretty normal um, obviously if it's freezing cold different story we're in a country where we don't really have that I'm in Australia uh, this is all the masking up I'm going to mask up to that line there that's so above that line that's all I'm going to do the rest of it's good enough for me and um, it'll make it look new once this is finished and really easy as you can see here Previous owner had rod holders in there, crazy. I put um, aluminium sheeting underneath and I've used a uh, automotive um, two-part, uh, what would you call it? It's like, like a car bog, I suppose, is what we call it. I'm not sure what you call it in other countries, but uh, a fiberglass type um, putty. Very simple, takes you a few minutes. It dries within a few minutes and you can sand it and off you go this primer straight over the top of all of these different things as you can see here that's going to go over this all these scratches and blah 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 i've given it a light sand and we'll see what it comes up like i know from because i've used it on many other things um and it'll come up great see all the scratches there gaps there's gaps around the rod holders there's gaps as you can see where the the top uh, alloy, I suppose it's a, like a cast alloy section is pressed onto the side there. There's a gap there. I'm going to fill all that and it'll stay like that forever and a day. It's flexible. Uh, enamel paint is not flexible. It becomes brittle and if you bump it and are rough with it, you'll take chips out of it. Uh, if you scratch along it you'll you'll scratch it you know this stuff here is very forgiving it's very flexible um but think of it like a a rubber band you know you you drag something on it you will damage it but not to the same severity as the other it's much more resilient 
Now this is, I'm using a foam roller here. You can actually use a Lanzor roller. So I found out this roller cracked up when I was washing it after this one. I've had it for a long time, last forever. This will give you a really smooth finish, not necessary at all. You know, just think of stepping into this on a, from a, from a pontoon or something. You want it to have a bit of a, bit of a slightly a ripply finish, just slightly for better grip. Um, I'm going to put two coats on this. I'm just doing one for this video. I'll then do another one that you won't see, and then I'll go for the top coats after that. Something I wouldn't mind mentioning, oh, this YouTube channel I have is quite new, and it's very tough to get subscribers. I have a lot of interesting stuff on fishing, animals, and nature already up. These are my real interests, which are stuff that I've decided I want to pursue onto the YouTube. And uh, I will be posting lots more, so it would be really appreciated if you could actually click that subscribe button, and then you get to see all my new postings and uh, you'll be notified when they're in. Thank you. You see the gap that was on the side here at the top far side there, you see the gap and it just fills this up. Now you might think, oh God, he's pouring paint in there, but not really, there's not that much going in there. You just force it in with a roller. It's even easier with a Lanswell roller, which is what I used for the top coats. And as I said, because this one cracked up, fell apart as these foam ones can do. Uh, and I used the Lanzor one, which is a pretty long nape, and uh, I used it on the other side as well, and the other side came up just amazing. Um, just as good as this side, but the other side I actually decided I'm going to sand this a bit more, because it was really pretty rough, and I sanded it with a random orbital sander and a little bit by hand, and it, it, it came up like new. Just amazing. Uh, and, and it looks quite natural. Um, the rod holders here, the plastic rod holders, I've actually polyurethane those in a long time ago, and and the stainless screws, and I've paint, decided I'm going to paint those too. It will look pretty, quite pretty with if they were black, but I just wanted to paint them. If I want to paint them black in the future, I can do, but it's all sealed in. Everything's sealed. There's going to be no salty water dripping down through. Very easy to wipe clean when you come home. I'm not a person that likes to fill my boat up with water. It doesn't drip any water inside, it doesn't leak, and I wanted to keep it that way. This is the other side now. Look at the difference of this. This is the port side, the left-hand side of the boat, facing forward. And the work, but part I've been working on is the is the starboard side, the right-hand side. And that's just after one coat of primer. Wow, wow, wow. And uh, quite a difference. I actually do paint the stern of the boat as well, the bow of the boat, all that area, but just the top section. This is actually a top coat you're looking at here now. This is the enamel coat on this. It's a gloss enamel. I probably, I had it at home. Um, if I chose again, I'd probably just go with something like maybe a low sheen or a semi-gloss. Um, it doesn't need to be gloss. It's glary enough when you're out in the water it is, but it will dull off pretty quick. As you can see here, where I've done, and where it fits on to what's been sitting there before, it's just a real mess, but you wait till you see what it, what it comes up like when I'm finished. Um, this is a pretty good sand I've done here of the port side, the left side, ready for cleaning down and masking up like the other one was. The front, you saw what it was like before, looks a little bit better now, doesn't it? Haven't masked up yet, but that's coming up soon. Got to finish that bit off there, it's a bit yuck. Scratch, scratch, I scratch all the paint, sometimes you've got to get in there and scratch it all off with a screwdriver or whatever tool you have that's suitable. Off the chrome work, or the stainless steel work, I should say. But with these random orbital sanders too, I have it hooked up to an old vacuum cleaner, it really does a good job. You can see there the uh, anchor well. I paint that as well because this stuff's perfect for pretty well all plastics. I don't think there's any anything listed that I've ever seen before that that is, would be an issue with plastics. Um, cleaning it, I think, is a really good idea. I clean it with, as I said, that turpentine. That turpentine costs you what four or five dollars for a bottle. You lose you use hardly any of it. Use a clean rag. Um, and just clean it down. It evaporates, so there's no need to have to do anything after you've cleaned it. It's, uh, you don't have to blow it down or anything else. It just evaporates um, and let, leave that happen. It evaporates quite quickly before you actually start working on it. Uh, the boat there, you can see underneath, it's not 
at all polished underneath yet. It looks a bit bleh, but so you'll see at the end what I've done. Now here you go, finished product, the original, two coats of primer. They, re they say on the tin one's fine. I wanted to fill every little gap. So you see there's no gaps, it's, everything's just brilliant. Um, here it is, I've actually done the back of it. I didn't put that in the video, that was a bit of a pooey job with all the steering, etc. in the way. I painted the seat. Um, wasn't really part of this video. Just it was a bit, a bit yucky, a previous owner had run, made a bit of a mess with some paint. That is the other side. And you can see I've actually given the shine to the side of the boat and the motor, etc. It looks really cool. And painted the whole the whole stern of the boat and the bow of the boat up the top of the bow. Um, and it really, I'm really happy the way it came up. I did pull all the lights off. I masked everything up as you saw before. And I think it turned out really good. Now, I'm going to put the links to everything in the description. I'm also going to put a little bit of the labeling of the paint and the the primer I used after this video finishes. So stick around and I uh, really appreciate you looking and I will look forward to when I see your name pop up as a new subscriber. Have a great life and I um, will put out many more that you'll enjoy. Thank you.